Welcome back once again. This is a lecture on audits by Pinnacle Professional College, where we bring you excellent um, education when it comes to accounting and auditing. So in our previous lectures, we talked about audit strategies. We laid the foundation for audit strategies. So if you haven't watched our previous lecture, please do well to watch it. Today, we'll be diving a lot more into audit strategy. We have a Telegram group. So if you haven't joined our Telegram group, please do so. The Telegram group is Pinnacle Professional College. And there you can get um, our videos there as well. So what are the factors in the choice of audit strategy? What are some of the factors to consider in choosing an audit strategy? Choosing an audit strategy will depend on a number of factors. Number one, to depend on the nature and size of the client's business, right? What is the nature of the business? What is the size of the business? A business risk approach is best suited for large companies. You know, so for large companies, a business risk approach is suitable. And for smaller companies, as we already indicated in our previous lecture, a statement of financial position approach is usually the most suitable. So um, this is something that is very, very important and something that is you need to keep in mind. So in choosing another strategy, you need to understand the nature of the business, of the client's business and the size of the client's business. You also need to understand as an auditor, the control procedures and control environment that have been put in place. You know. So what are the control procedures that have been put in place and what is the control environment? A system-based approach is most suitable when there's a strong control environment and internal control systems are properly put in place. It's very, very important. Another thing that influences the choice of audit strategies are the audit methods and techniques favored by the audit firm. You know, what are the audit methods and techniques? It's very, very important. So number one is the nature and size of the client's business. Number two, the control procedures and control environments. And number three, the audit techniques. Now let's talk about the development of audit strategy and practices. Auditing practice has developed significantly over recent years, you know. And what are the reasons for this, these developments? You know, there's an increasing size and, and complexity of business units, right? So organizations are becoming a lot more bigger and complex. And so that is impacting the way audit is done. And there's also an attempt to improve the efficiency of the entire audit process, you know. So the first major development in the normal audit approach was a switch from an emphasis on substantive testing to internal control testing or the system-based approach. You know, we talked about the system-based approach. We focus more on internal control system. So that was the first major development so was like the slow or the transition from substantive testing to a more system-based approach that concentrates on um, internal control system. So these are developments that are happening constantly in, um, in the audit practice, in the audit practice. Very, very important to understand. Very, very important. Now, it's important to understand what we mean by the business risk approach. We are, we are talking about approaches or strategies, you know, of handling audits, you know. So it's important to understand the business risk approach, right? The business risk approach is very, very key, very, very key. So when we say uh, the business risk, you know, what is the business risk? The business risk is simply the threats that an event or development may adversely affect the ability of the entity to achieve its objectives, right? So 
is there anything within the environment that might affect the organization's ability to achieve its ob objective? That's a business risk. It is the risk of an adverse development, a negative development that could have a major impact on the company's business. So things like a loss of a major customer is an example of a business risk. Business risk are risk faced by management of the client entity, which could have an impact on the financial statement. Could have an impact on the financial statement. It's very, very important. Please keep that in mind. The business risk approach involves the auditor looking at the business as a whole and carrying out an evaluation of the risk to which it may be exposed. Now, this point we're explaining business risk, we said that is the threat that an event or a development may adversely affect an entity's ability to achieve its objective. So when we are deploying the business risk approach, we are looking at the business holistically. We are looking at the business as a whole and trying to find out what are some of the risks um, that might affect the operation of the business. The auditor goes ahead to identify the business risk which may have an impact on the financial statements of the client's company. So the general approach here would be to identify the key business risk, evaluate the possible impact on the organization and its financial statements, and plan the approach. So this is where the auditor will plan the approach to the audits around the business risk that have been identified. So once you identify the business risk, then the auditor plans the approach of the audit around these key business risks, around these key business risks. Very, very crucial. That is what we mean by the business risk approach. So you look at the risk um, that affects an organization's ability to achieve its objectives. You identify them, then you plan your audit around those risks, you know, and how to you audit along those lines. Very, very important very very important now um we were talking about business risk approach right so the, let's look at the nature of the business risk approach the business risk approach starts at an earlier stage than the conventional audit risk model you know so the business risk approach starts at an earlier stage so what do we mean by earlier stage because the business risk with the business risk approach, the, the auditor looks at the nature of the client's business and tries to understand the events and circumstances that affect its ability to achieve its objectives. Very, very important. Let me repeat that again. The auditor looks at the nature of the client's business and develops an understanding of the events and circumstances that may affect the entity's ability to meet. Um, client's objectives or the entity's objectives. You know, so having an, a good understanding of the business risk, then the auditor can go ahead and you know, make an informed assessment of the inherent risk and the control risk facing the client. So you see, the business risk, the business risk, you, know, you are looking at the risk that are facing the business. So the business risk approach is sometimes referred to as the top-down approach. And the reason it's called top-down is you are looking at the business as a whole from the top, you know, and the risk that faces it, and it trickles down, 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 down. So the approach starts at the top with the business, you know, that's why I said earlier. And the approach ends at the bottom with the financial statements, which record the outcome of the business transactions. The business therefore drives the financial statements. This is a more holistic or high level approach to auditing. It's a more holistic or high level approach to auditing and has similarities with business management and strategy. You know, it's more like a strategic approach to auditing. Using this approach to an audit successfully depends on having adequate and up to date information about the client's business and business environment so you need to have um 
to be able to deploy this approach very, very effectively, you need to have um, up-to-date information about the client's business and what's happening in the business environment. It's very, very important. So these are some external business risk, you know. If you need some examples of business risk, number one, the loss of a major um, contract, long-term decline demand for the company's products, a new competitor moving into the market, you know, the impact of laws and regulations, a recently developed technology and its impacts, changes in the macroeconomy, threats from competitors, you know. So you see, these are high level risk that affects the business. Very, very important. Very, very important. So those were external business risks. Now these are internal. You know, these business risks, some of them could be external, some of them could be internal, and they all affect businesses and their ability to achieve um, objectives. So it's very, very important to understand. So what are some of the examples of internal business risk? Internal business risk. Um, we have risk arising from ineffective employees or weak management. We have the risk from a lack of customer care and attention to customer needs. We have poor financial management. We have lack of finances. We have risk due to system weaknesses. We have risk of fraud, risk of misappropriation of assets. These are things that happen within the organization that are business risks. One of the things we need to know is that not all risks are of equal significance. Not all risks are of equal significance. That's very important to understand, right? And so that's why there are all kinds of risk matrices to assess um, the impact and the likelihood of risk, because not all risks are the same. The significance of a risk um, to the auditors depends on two factors. Depends on two factors. Number one is the impact of the risk. Always remember this, the impacts. And number two, the likelihood of the risk. These are the two things that define um, risk. Number one is what? Impact. And number two is likelihood. Number one is impact. And number two is likelihood. Number one is what? Impact. So when we say impact, is the impact of the risk on the financial statement. So here I say the impact that it will have on the financial statement if an adverse event occurs, it is the size of the risk. In an auditing context, this could be broadly interpreted as the materiality of the risk. The materiality of the risk. So this is the impact of the risk. Then you also have the probability that's the risk to occur. So the likelihood or probability that an adverse event will occur so that the risk becomes a reality. So you see, that's how you evaluate risk, right? You evaluate risk on two fronts. Number one is what? The impact and number two is the likelihood or probability that the risk would occur. So this is where we bring this audit strategy session um, to an end. Um, I hope you enjoyed this lecture. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment in the comment section and we'll attend to the question. Thank you very much and have a good day. Bye.